So we're going to solve this problem here, the, the moment of force F, shown in the diagram here, about point O. And previously I solved this using a two-dimensional solution where I broke F into an X component and um, put it there, F into a Y component, multiplied them by their perpendicular distances, added the solution together, and we got the answer. And the answer we ended up with was um, negative 460 newton meters, or 460 newton meters in the clockwise sense. So those were our answers before. And now we're going to solve the same problem using the cross product formulation. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to redraw this in a, a simpler form, a stick figure that goes through the center of these points. And I'm going to use the formulation the moment as a vector is equal to the cross product of the position vector r and the force vector f. Okay. So in this case, r is not the perpendicular distance like we had in the last problem where we had moment as force times perpendicular distance, but r is actually the vector from point O to the application of the point of the force. And the way the formulation works is I could actually draw r to any point along the line of action of the force here. However, the easiest one is from O to B because I have those coordinates. So let's go ahead and just write out everything we know. First of all, we know that R is going to be 5i plus 2j. Let's go ahead and do it in three dimensions so we have the we can see what's going on. 0k, and that has units of meters. And our force vector, F, is going, we have to break it in, so it's basically going to be is equal to 4 fifths of 100 newtons in the i direction minus 3 fifths of 100 newtons in the j direction plus 0 in the k direction. Again, this is a two-dimensional problem, but we're going to capture um, both of them. So that gives us 80 newtons i minus 60 newtons j. Now to use the cross product, what we do is we use the determinant. So R cross F is calculated by doing a determinant of I, J, and K, and R, so that would be 5, 2, and 0. and the force, 80 and 60 and 0. Now, there's many ways of doing the determinant. The way that I like to do them is I make two more columns. I copy the first and second columns over here, i and j, and 5 and 2, and 80 and 60. And then what I do is I take these diagonals. So multiply that together, we get 0. Multiply that together, we get zero. We multiply that together, and this should be a negative 60 there, my negative 60, and I get negative 300k. Remember, when we're doing moments, the moment is about the perpendicular axis, so it makes sense that my answer would be about point k. Then I take the other diagonal, and I get 80 times 2, and I get 160. And, and because my second row is in meters and my third row is in newtons, my answer will be in newton meters. Take this one here and I get a zero, and I take this one here and I get a zero. And I subtract the upper one from the lower one. So at the end, what I get is minus 300 newton meters, and this should have a k on it, newton meters in the k direction, minus 160 newton meters in the k direction, and that gives me minus 460 newton meters in the k direction. Or, looking at the two-dimensional problem, 460 newton meters going clockwise. And there's our answer.